perfected that. He's the best at that for you and me. There's no one else who can steer us to the right direction or on the right path like the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan aren't even close to. And if you are even approaching, then that means you're a student of him. So we have to just follow the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. Follow everything he said and be like he said, be like a parent. It ain't hard. Is, is a parent brother better than me and you, brothers and sisters? I said, is a parent better than us? We are the greatest of Allah's creation. So if a parent can uh, repeat something, and oh my God, the parent talk, well then, well then we'll do the same to us. Did you hear what the brother and sister said? All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah, but we just repeating the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad do we serve the honorable minister who was far come. Master Farah Muhammad is our foundation, is a sure, a, a, a sure and strong foundation. If we root ourselves in him, then nothing or no one can break up our foundation. There's nothing that someone can say, nothing that someone can do to break you down, to beat you up, to make you get weak, because our foundation is strong. When you got something that has a strong foundation, when the storm is hit, it, the structure is still standing. And even if the structure gets damaged in the process, you can just go and make repairs. But something that has a weak foundation, when a storm comes, then the whole thing collapses. And it falls down, and now you have to start from scratch. Well, we don't want to be like that because the time that we're living in is not going to allow us to have enough time to start back up from zero. But we have to develop a strong foundation. It has to be unique for the time that we're living in. When you, the foundation of a house ain't the same foundation that they use to build a skyscraper. But they put hydraulics and everything on the foundation so that when it's so big and it's so heavy that when the winds hit it, that it's able to shift. Yes, sir. Is that right? Yes, sir. When, when winds blow at a certain speed and a certain force, it will move a big building, but they build the foundation so that it's able to rock this way. It's able to lean that way, but it won't break. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's the same way we got to be, brothers and sisters. Yes, sir. We got to be able to move this way. Somebody try to push you down, we may just lean a little bit this way, but I'm still on my feet. You can't knock me down. You can't break me down. I might have a little bit damage, but I'm still standing. And that's how we got to be. So let, let us prepare our minds and our heart to receive a fireball in the ministry class. We have been told by our regional minister that he is one of the best in the nation. He said this is one of our best. And if you go to some other places, you'll be running back to Buffalo, New York. Go ahead. We got a man who can teach. We got a man who has been given a blessing by Allah to, to be able to translate what the honorable minister who was far as I said and break it down into baby food and give it to me and you. When a minister speaks, he speaks on so much, but you can just take five minutes of what he said and break it down and give somebody a five hour lecture. Well, this brother has been gifted with that ability and let's receive him with a warm round of applause and, and open up our hearts and our mind to receive brother that be my Give it up again for young brother Sean X. In the most holy name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that there's no God but Allah, that no matter what we may call him, we bear witness to the oneness of God, we bear witness to the oneness of all of his prophets and messengers, and the oneness of divine scripture. And so we are, are not here to argue or debate about what his name is, uh, as religious people do a lot. But we're taught in Islam when you want to say all of his names at one time, you simply say Allah, which means all in all. And so when we say Allah, we're saying the beneficent, the merciful, the all-knowing, the all-wise, the exalter, the abaser, the subtle, the aware, the manifest, the hidden, we're saying all 99 of his attributes, his names, 
And as we say those names, each one of his names gives us a key to gain access to that aspect of himself, uh, which we are so sorely and desperately in need of. And so the time that we're living in and the time that we're going through right now, we will need to call on Allah by all of his names to gain access to his mercy, his guidance, his light, his beneficence. And so we thank Allah for his uh, former messengers, prophets, and apostles. The greatest of Allah's gifts is divine guidance, which always comes in the form of divine revelation. It never comes from a cloud or from a ray of light or from a burning bush, but divine guidance always comes from divine revelation. And there's always a man that is raised up to bring that divine revelation, that divine guidance to the human family. And so we thank Allah for those former messengers, prophets, and apostles. We thank Allah for Moses and the Torah and all of the Israelite prophets. We thank Allah for Jesus and the gospel and those disciples of Jesus. We thank Allah for Muhammad and the Holy Quran. Peace be upon all of the worthy servants and messengers of Allah. But as black people here in the wilderness of North America, we have to bear witness that if there was ever a people who needed divine guidance, divine instruction, divine answers and solutions to the problems that we suffer from, we have to bear witness that black people in North America are a people in need of divine guidance. Our condition bears witness that we need not only a prophet of God, but our condition justifies and warrants the visitation of God himself. And so the scriptures is true when God tells Abraham, know of a surety, Abraham, that your seed shall be a stranger in a strange land for 400 years, where they shall serve them and be afflicted by them. And after that time, I'm not going to send someone, but I myself, God, will come and I will judge that nation and I will bring them out, meaning your seed, Abraham, I will bring them out with great substance. So I'm not going to bring them out raggedy as a fork of greens or raggedy, uh, hungry and naked and out of doors, but I'm going to bring them out with great substance. This is the promise of Allah after the 400 years of servitude, bondage, and affliction. And we know that Allah never fails to perform his promise, and his promise is always true. And so we thank him as we see these scriptures are coming to light after 400 years, 440 plus years, that Allah God has come himself in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the long-awaited Messiah, Mahdi, the coming of God. We thank him for raising up the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, his messenger, his Messiah, his exalted Christ and for giving us an extension of love and mercy personified and exemplified in our big brother, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. It is in their worthy and righteous names I greet you, my sisters and brothers, as we say it once again in the language of our fathers, the original language of the human family, as alaykum. All praise is due to a lot of brothers and sisters. Let's give it up once again for Brother Sean X. For just let us feel the love, Because a young man like that, 19, 20 years old, could be doing a whole lot of other things, destructive things, and it's usually brothers that are his age that are really a problem in the ghettos of black America. And so for a man to uh, be that young and to have a love for the word of God, not wanting to grow up to be uh, another Jay-Z or another uh, uh, Rick Ross, but following the example of the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, wanting to be a young brother, a soldier in the army of God to go to war for the hearts and minds of the people, we should always encourage a young man like that because we always complain. We always complain. Oh, 
all praises be to Allah. We always complain when a young man like that is doing the opposite of what this man is doing. So the Quran says, O oh, you who believe, respond to Allah and his messenger when he calls you to that which gives you life. How do you know that you and I are alive? It is because we respond to Allah and his messenger when he calls us. And so when you look for signs of life, you're looking for someone to respond. Whenever you see a person flatline in the hospital and there's no heartbeat, they will put what you call a defibrillator on the person and they will charge it with electrical charge of electricity. They put it on and they tell everybody, clear, and then they send a jolt of electricity through the body and then they hope to see some motion. They hope to see the, the little blip on the screen of the heart uh, uh, electrocardiogram machine go up and down because motion is an indicator of life. So they're looking to see the heart be restarted in motion again. They're looking to see the pulse. When you see the motion of the blood coursing through the veins, that is an indicator of life. So they're looking for some response from what they have given of an electrical shock to try to revive that person. And so, you know, you look for a response as an indicator of life. And so as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is pouring his heart out, as he is leaving it all on the field, as they say, as he's leaving it all in the ring and crisscrossing America and trying to uh, uh, pour his heart out until his heart is about to bust out of his chest. Did I say something wrong, brothers and sisters? As he's doing this, he's looking for the believers, looking for black people to respond to what he has given to us. There's some people who sit like a lump on a log sometimes, and they say, I'm not going to respond. You see these kinds of people. They have the attitude that I'm not responding. I ain't going to respond. I don't care if they call me to that which gives me life. I don't care if it is the truth. You're going to have to do some backflips and tap dance and break dance if you want me to respond. So you got to work hard to get the people of God to respond to that which gives them life. But Allah says, oh, you who believe, respond to that which gives you life. And know that Allah comes between a man or a woman and their heart. And that to him you shall be gathered. So we are looking for a response after Savior's day, after the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan went back to the black mecca of America, Detroit, Black Bottom, Detroit, Michigan, and talk on how strong is our foundation. Then after part two in Chicago, because he told us at the dinner table that I did not want to end in Detroit, but I wanted to come back to Chicago and end it out there. So when, whenever we hear, I didn't want to end in Detroit, but I wanted to end the series in Chicago, he's talking about winding up all of the teaching and the preaching and all of the clear guidance and warning that he has been given to us. Is everybody all right? Yes, sir. Has it been a clear guidance? Yes, sir. Has it been a clear warning for us? Yes, sir. Is it something that even a fool would find hard to disagree with or to err from the clarity and the pristine, uh, clear quality of the warning and guidance that the Honorable Minister Farrakhan has given to us? So we have no excuse to say that it has not been clear. But before I go any further, I'd like to take a, one second to welcome our great community business leader here today. He's with us here, Brother Bill Peoples. William yes. Peoples is here, long time business leader, store owner, community pillar, community activist, a man who is a business owner, but not just a man who takes the money and runs with the money, but a man who is concerned and so in love with black people that you see him set up organizations like Umojo organization, Unity organization.
you see him having a, the State of the Black Family event every year. You see him recognizing uh, the man and the woman of the year every year for their outstanding work in the community. So he's a man, when, whenever he gets up to speak, you see him almost brought to tears over the condition of our people. So we welcome you here today, Brother Bill Peoples, and we let us see you. We want to welcome Brother James, uh, y'all remember Brother James, uh, Brother James? Uh, Brother James X, that's what we know him as, but a long time brother in the mines from Ferry and Cornwall and Ferry and Goodyear, his brother is here today, so we welcome you here today, brother. It's always good to see you, brother. That, that's what we want to see because, you know, I know Brother Bill Peoples is a long time listener of the radio broadcast of the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, a long time supporter and helper of the Mons. And so, what we want to see is we want to see our people come out. We want to invite our people out yes, because that is the way we want to respond. Is that right? Yes, sir. That is an indicator of life for us. Yes, that is a sign of motion for us because where there is no motion, there is no life. Yes, Whenever you see the heart in motion, that means the person is alive. Whenever you see water, a stream of water that is rapidly moving in motion, a mountain stream that is has a current to it. It's got a current, so because it's in motion, whenever you see that, that means life is there. But whenever you see a pool of stagnant water where there is no motion, then after a while you see death in that water, and you can't drink anything from that water because death is there. Is that right? There's a smell that begins to develop as the water is a putrid, brackish, uh, a stagnant pool of water where there's no fish that's there. There's no tadpoles there, but the only life you see is the little mosquitoes and the leeches and the blood-sucking kinds of creatures that want to suck the blood of something else. So, so that is not life, but that is death. And that is where all of the blood-sucking leeches like to set up camp at. We don't want an environment like that. We don't want a mosque like that. We don't want a church like that. We don't want a community like that. Where all the blood suckers want to line up. So we, uh, you know, we're thankful to Allah that we had the honor and the blessing and the privilege of having our illustrious, powerful, hard-hitting student regional captain Brother Abdul Majid Muhammad here in Buffalo yesterday, as he came to Buffalo and went on to Rochester and Utica and came through the area. And we are happy to say and fired up to say that the FOI responded to a call yes, and came out. Yes, Brother Adam was there. Yes, Brother Robert was there. Yes, we saw Brother Neil was there. Brother Jeff Muhammad was there. So brothers responded to the call. And not only that, we were at 500 Final Call newspapers in the entire city of Buffalo before Brother Machine came. But we're happy to say that we went from 500 Final Calls to 2,500 Final Calls responding to the call. Thursday. 
speaking to uh, the general public on Sunday. Brother Majid called back to the region. Is everybody all right? Yes. Yes. To find out, well, how many final calls have we ordered now since we're since Savior's Day? And it was at the same 12,000 that we had before Savior's Day. So he got on the phone and it was like he had to put an electronic defibrillator on the captains and lieutenants and the FOI and we went from 12,000 to somewhere in the area of 15,000. But he said that I have to go and I have to look in the faces of the FOI. I don't want to talk on the phone, but I want to look in their faces and ask them, why have not you responded to the call of the messenger and Allah when he calls you to that which gives you life? This is not something that will give you death. This is something that will give you and I life and life more abundantly. And we have to bear witness with our own personal testimony that uh, where we were once dead, deaf, dumb, and blind, we are alive because of that man, Brother Farrakhan, calling us to life. We got personal testimony today. The Holy Quran said that you and I should consider from whence we came from. Once upon a time, we were worthless water. We were nothing to speak of. We were a drop of sperm and a drop of ovum in the wombs of our mother in a very hostile environment, in a, in a dark environment, in the triple darkness of our mother's wombs, in the, in the hostile environment competing against 200 million to a billion other sperm cells swimming upstream against the pull of gravity, so we got to consider that we all came from that. We came from nothing, a, a worthless drop of water to where we are now. So we came a long way. It does not matter if you're a president, a king, a potentate, a minister, an imam. You could be poor and out of doors, but we all came from a, a, a worthless drop of water so man should consider from whence he came because once upon a time we were nothing to speak of. So when we consider how far we've come, yes, sir. Yes, we got to say that we, should, we cannot give up now. No, we sir. cannot turn back now. We cannot act like we are ungrateful for what we have been blessed with of life and guidance and correction and resurrection and raising us up from the mental death of our spiritual death and bringing us to life again. And so we're thankful for that and we want to respond to Allah and his messenger when he calls us to that which gives us life. But know that Allah comes between a man and his heart. So whenever he calls you, his call comes between that which you and I love, what we desire, what we cherish, the hidden motives and the hidden things that we desire and cherish, that is what is called the heart of us. But when Allah calls us, it comes between that which we want, that which we desire, that which we cherish, to see whether or not we value that thing more than we value Allah and the life that he's given to us. And anything that we value above him, we're not worthy of that thing. If we value that above the God that gave us that thing, he is the beneficent, he is the author and the cause of all good. And so if we take the good that he gives us and then we value that above the one who gave it to us, we're not worthy of it and he will take it from us. So if whatever we want, whatever we cherish or desire, Allah will take it from us because we have made that thing a God besides him. And we have engaged in polytheism so he comes between a man or a woman and their heart, and to him, you and I shall be gathered. So we want to respond to Allah and his messenger, because the subject that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has been dealing with is how strong is our foundation? Can we 
survive? That's a good question for all of us. That all of us will have to answer that question. Not with words from our mouth. We have to answer that question with how we will respond. How we will act and what we will do. Because Islam is not something that you say, but Islam is something that you do. Islam is not a noun, but it is a verb and a noun. It's something that you are, but it's something that you do. And so if you and I are not engaged in that which we say we are, then we are hypocrites to that which we say we are. And this is the day where strong hypocrisy will challenge strong belief. And so we have to be very wary. We have to be very vigilant, diligent, and on guard today. We got to be especially watchful at night during the times of meeting because some of these meetings are like secret councils going on. Where you have people who want to set up a mosque and revolt to another mosque. We should all be in the same mosque. We should all be about the same mission. But when you start to see another mosque forming within a mosque, and then you see the other mosque not present in the, the bigger mosque, or the, 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 uh, the one mosque, then you're starting to see groups forming a, a mosque that's built up in revolt, or a church that's built up in revolt. Something that we have seen throughout our history in black America. Is that right or wrong? The enemy has always pitted black leaders against black leaders. Black organizations against black organizations. And then they cancel one another out. You have the great uh, Honorable Marcus Mosiah Darby that the enemy used W.E.B. Du Bois and the NAACP to offset one another. To cancel out the, 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 the movement and the energy and the vitality of Marcus Garvey's movement. But the same thing happened with W.E.B. Du Bois and uh, Booker T. Washington. We have produced some of the greatest leaders that any nation or group of people could ever want or desire. But there's always, the enemy is always using one against the other. How is he able to do this? We have to find out how we can safeguard ourselves against it because we have to have a strong foundation today so that we can survive. This is a, a subject that the Honorable Minister Farrakhan has been dealing with and coming from the book of Matthew in the 16th chapter, he talks, Jesus is talking to his disciples and this is how we get a strong foundation. This is the beginning of how we get a strong foundation because in this chapter, in these verses, Jesus is talking about the foundation upon which he is to build his church. But Jesus did not come to really build a church. He came to build the kingdom of God to lay the base for the kingdom of God. And so how did he come to say, or how did he arrive at the statement that upon this rock, I build my church or nation? Is everybody all right? We need some basic religious instruction today. You'll be surprised how many of these verses that we don't even know, uh, brothers and sisters, and where it all came from. But in the 16th chapter, 13th verse, Jesus talking in the book of Matthew, talking to his disciples, asking them the question, who do men say I am? And they answered back, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're Elias, and others say you're Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Jesus said, who do you say I am? I'm talking to the disciples, the followers. Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto thee, but my Father in heaven. And I also say unto thee that thou, Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell shall not prevail 
against it, meaning this rock, this foundation. So the gates of hell will come. The gates of hell will challenge, but the gates of hell will not prevail against it because this is a solid foundation. It's a solid rock because flesh and blood did not reveal the true identity of the man of God, but it came from my Father in heaven, meaning that it was revealed to you by God himself. So nobody had to tell them that. They should have known already. They should have known because they walked with the man, were taught by the man, were brought to light by the man, saw their life improve from following this man, saw themselves become morally strong and upright and full of life, so they have a personal testimony that nobody had to tell them that this is the man of God, the son of God. You and I know from our own life that nobody had to tell us and nobody can come between us with some old wicked, rusty, dusty lies. They want to dust off the same old lies and warm it up and reheat it and repackage the same old lies and put a new package on the same lies to try to make us deviate from following the man of God that gave us life and has defended every one of us yes, sir. when we were not strong enough to defend ourselves. Right. The Honorable Minister Farrakhan has defended even Negroes who criticize and detract from him. Is that right? Yes, right. Negroes who the enemy tries to prop up as a would-be pseudo-leader, a hand-picked, handkerchief head, buck dancing, bow jangling, chicken and biscuit eating leader that they put their stamp of approval on. Yes, if the enemy approves of a leader, you should say, I don't want him for my leader. Yes. But if the enemy disapproves of one from among us, we should say there must be something about him. I need to look further into that. All praise be to Allah because not one of our leaders who was strong for us who was sincere for us, who was courageous and full of love for us. The enemy did not like one of them. But after that one dies, then they want to name a street or an alley or some backyard after that person as if they loved the person while they were alive. But they did not love Harriet Tubman while she was alive. They had a warrant or a bounty on her head, $25,000, dead or alive. So let's not fall asleep and act like they loved Harry and Tuck. Come on, bro. They did not love Malcolm X while he was alive. No, now they have a postage stamp in Malcolm X Boulevard and act like they loved Malcolm X, but they hated Malcolm X while he was right. living and breathing amongst us. Right. Don't let yourself get lulled to sleep to believe that they embrace Malcolm X. They didn't love Toussaint Le Overture. They didn't love Nat Turner. They didn't love Adam Clayton Powell. They didn't love Noble Jew Ali. They didn't love the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They didn't love Sojourner Truth. They didn't love Fatty New Hamer. They didn't love any of the strong ones. And they did not love Martin Luther King as quiet as his kept. But they take the, after the man grows and evolves and sees that he is integrating his people into a house that's on fire. I said, Martin Luther King drew in the coming of the Son of Man. Then you have these wicked, self righteous Sadducees, Pharisees, hypocrites who say, Show us another sign. What sign should we look for, Jesus? You always got these ones among us. They want you to do one more backflip, do one more break dance, do one more tap dance, do one more miracle. Show us one more sign. And then we'll follow you. But no sign shall be given unto it except the sign of Jonah. Yes, Jonah, the reluctant prophet. Jonah, the one who did not want to go out to warn the people of God. That reminds me of somebody. It reminds me of us. It reminds Brother Farrakhan of us who are reluctant to go out in the highways and the byways and go down in the streets and in the gutters and in the alleys to warn our people and to bring our people to the path of life and life more abundantly so we can save ourselves.
parents saying our children and our grandchildren right. are reluctant people, but that's the sign that Jesus said will be given unto you. So they're looking for another sign. Give us another speech, Brother Farrakhan. That's my man Farrakhan. Farrakhan, tell it like it is. And we act like he's a record or a CD or a song. Come on, brother. But he said that I have piped unto you all the day long, and you have not lamented. I have mourned unto you all day long, and you have not lamented. I have piped unto you, and you have not danced. You have not responded. So the minister said, I don't know if, uh, if Allah has taken away my spirit, his spirit, for me to preach to you anymore. Because you have not responded well. So he's looking for us to respond. Is that right? I don't know if Allah has taken away my spirit. But we know that Allah, from the Holy Quran, that Allah never punishes or chastises the people while the messenger is among them. But after the messenger leaves, then the four winds stop the blow. After the Son of Man now begins to prophesy unto the winds, and the winds blow on the bones, then the bones stand up exceedingly great because the winds represent hard times, tribulation, trials, setbacks, all kind of conditions which begin to force you and I now to call out to Allah. And we remember Allah when we're going through rough times. But we forget all about him when, whenever times get smooth again for us. And we wear God like a summer coat or a winter coat. After the cold weather goes, we take God off. Is that right? It's starting to get warmer outside. You see people take their coats off and come outside and enjoy the weather. We can't treat God like a winter coat. We can't put them on and take them off when we feel like it or when things get better. And that's why Allah keeps us great sometimes in trials and in person. Because that's the only time when we give a sincere prayer. That's when we're lengthy in supplication. That's when we don't rush through our prayer, but we make it a long, drawn out, sincere prayer. We put feeling and emotion into the prayer. You see us bring that prayer from the bottom of our feet, bring it up into our heart. Oh, Allah. And we say it like we're in pain. Oh, Allah. Allah brings us through it. We forget all about it. We go back to living a riotous life. We go back to living in a, a life where we don't even allow the, the guidance and the mercy and the, 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 the uh, warning to enter into our life to correct our motion and our actions. So he keeps us in a difficult situation sometimes to save our life. And when we look at how the winds blow on the dry bones, even in the wind blowing on the bones. It's not that he causes the wind to blow on the bones to crush and destroy the bones, but the underlying motive of the winds blowing in the first place is to motivate and inspire the bones to stand up and be exceedingly great. He wants them to be great. He has a desire that they stand up, even in the pain and the trial and the difficulty. It is a purification for us. Yes, and the underlying motive and aim and purpose of the winds yes, is to yes, make us stand up and accept our own and be ourselves. Yes, so he's calling us to that, right. which will give us life. Yeah. And he keeps us in a condition. Sometimes we're not ready for what it is that God wants to bless us with. Yes. Right. Sometimes we don't have the moral backbone and the moral strength to be able to stand under the weight of what he's going to put on us. Right. Of greatness, of wealth, of eminence, 
of high praise and exaltation, he wants to raise the bottom rail and make it the top rail. He wants to take the tail and make it the head and it will no more be the tail. And so a people that's brought from the bottom to the top, just like Drake said on his record, started from the bottom, now we're here. He don't bring you to the top so you can brag about it. He don't bring you to the top so you can puff your chest out. He don't bring you to the top so you can look down on other people, but he raises you from the bottom to the top so that you can be a magnetic attraction for the rest of the human family who's on the bottom right now. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that I'm just a piece of junk that God took off the junk pot. He shined up a piece of junk and polished it and buffed it and took now a piece of junk and made it shiny and bright and he put it back on top of the pile of the junk. Yes, so now another piece of junk now is shiny and polished and it stands out from the other pieces of junk. But it only bears witness that the other pieces of junk can be shined and polished and buffed and brought to the top just like I was. It bears witness. And you and I are put in a position, a condition or brought to the top so that we can be a, a, an attractive, magnetic attraction for the entire human family. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes, and we are in no position at all to brag or be That's conceited right. boasters. That's right. Surely Allah hates the brain of an ass. Yes, Surely Allah loves not any conceited boaster. It's not that we should, you know, want to wear alligator shoes and uh, uh, Hugo Ball suits and be crispy and clean and then feel like we're too above our people that we won't talk to our people. It's not that we should be one of the exalt in our own self and walk around like peacocks and be proud of ourselves and look down on anyone. So after we have been put in such a condition and we have gone through so much of a purification out of the furnace of affliction, we don't want to brag to nobody now. We don't feel better than nobody now. We know that we came from where you are now and we have sympathy, empathy, and compassion for the condition of our people because we came from there. We came from out of hell. We should walk out of sky. We should walk around like butter won't melt in our mouth. Like our feet don't touch the ground. Come on. And Minister Farrakhan said that brother Khaled, that beautiful black, shiny, bald-headed brother Khaled used to sit down on the curb with a, a black man. Yes, and talk to the black man and say, come on, black man. Yes, he would look beyond the bloodshot eyes and the alcohol coming off their breath and say, you are God, black man. Stand up with me. Walk with me. Let's go to the bar. You can't just snatch a weight up from on top of the weight. You got to snatch it up, but then you have to get down. For all my weightlifters, what's all my weightlifters at? When you snatch and you do a, a deadlift, that's like lifting up the dead. They call it a deadlift. But you pull it up, but then at a certain point, you got to squat down and get underneath the weight of it. And then you push it up over your head, so you got to get down underneath it and push it up from the bottom up. You can't pull it from the top up. So he puts us in a condition where once we get to the other side, we will never try to brag or boast about it. And if we have any degree of pride or arrogance, the Quran said that some of us are like rocks, like stones, or rather worse than hearts. But Allah is able to make water to burst forth from some of those stones. And other stones fall down prostrate for fear of their Lord. So in other words, he's able to take the rocks, the stony-hearted, arrogant, prideful, stony-hearted rock, Come on. and then make water burst forth from the rock and cause streams to, forth, to, to burst forth. In other words, tears, crying tears of purification. Yes. Is everybody all right? So the conditions that are touching every one of us, 
We can feel like it's water pouring forth. Some of us are crying right now. We're crying inwardly because, and outwardly because of the loss that we're suffering right now. Yes, sir. So water is pouring forth from our hearts. And some of those stones fall down prostrate for fear of their Lord. So even in that, it's only to motivate you and I to fall down to our knees and prostrate for fear of our Lord. That's right. And water represents purification as it pours forth from our hearts. Yes. Keeping us in a condition where when we get to the other side, we will be the dross and the impurity of that will be completely burned away from us. That's right, Lord. Because we've not tried the silver and gold. But out of the furnace of affliction. Is everybody all right? Come on, sir. So this is how Allah, this is, you know, we're so thankful to Allah for yes, his guidance and the way Brother Farrakhan breaks it down and gives us guidance for our life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He set it up. We, we, we've been set up, brothers and sisters. That's right. 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 A setback is a setup for a comeback. Yes, sir. We all, man, we all been set up, brothers and sisters, because this is the way that Allah has fixed it. That's right, man. He has put in us a defect, a wobble. There's a wobble in the nature of man. There's always a positive and a negative, even in even in a, a, an atom or a molecule in the tiniest particle of life, there is a positive and a negative. There's a yin and a yang. There's a push and a pull. There's a strength and a weakness. There's a duality to everything in life. But when the yin and the yang pull against one another, Come on. when the strength and the weakness pull against one another, yes, when the positive and the negative pull against one another, it creates electricity or motion in us. Right. So he put it even in the atoms of our body, and all of our bodies are made up of atoms, so we got positive and negative even in the core of us. Yes, sir. We got strength and weakness in the core of us. That's right. In our internal being, there's a positive and a negative. Yes, sir. So whenever the positive struggles to overcome the negative, it creates motion in us. Yes, sir. It creates the mysterious force called electricity in us. That's right. But you would not have the motion if you didn't have the positive and the negative. That's right. If you didn't have the strength and the weakness. But as long as the strength fights to overcome the weakness, then you and I are in motion as we are elevating into oneness with him. Talk to me, brothers and sisters. I know I'm not the only on. one with the internal Go ahead. That's right. I'm not the only one with an internal weakness and a wobble in my nature. Yes, sir. We all got a bad witness that we have a wobble and a defect in us that we struggle against. As long as we struggle against our weaknesses and our shortcomings, Allah will bless us. That's right. He will amplify us. That's he right. will expand our breasts for us. That's right. And He will elevate us as long as we're struggling to overcome the weakness of ourselves. Yes, sir. That's right. But whenever we give in, of self and you don't fight against the flaw and the defect then you and I become exposed. That's right. We get exposed for the thing that we're engaging in under cover of night in the dark rooms. Yes sir. Right? Go ahead. That's right. You don't get exposed right away. Right. Allah is merciful for That's us. Right. Right. That's as long right. as we're struggling and fighting to overcome the thing which is displeasing to him, he will hide it from us. That's right. Yes, sir. It's like we never see the dark side of the moon because the dark side of the moon does not help to ripen the crops and cultivate the crops. It has no value if it does not reflect the light of the sun or the light of God. Yes, sir. So the dark side of the moon is always hidden from view because it has no benefit or value. Go ahead. To us. That's right. But if you and I are not struggling, fighting to overcome what it is, yes. of flaws, defects, weaknesses, and shortcomings, That's right. then we become, we get exposed for that. That's right. But the mercy of Allah is that he will cover it and hide it for yes, us. Yes, sir. That's right. Because he is pleased as we strive. Yes, sir. That's right. It pleases him that we strive. That's right, brother. To overcome what it is that is displeasing to God. That's right. 
right there. Yes, sir. He set it up in a duality. He set it up that way yes, sir. to bring us closer to himself. Right. Then he was able to, he brings forth revelation and guidance and he brings forth the light which begins to pull on us. That's right. Come on, come on. As the light of divine revelation hits us and hits our mind and hits our heart, it causes us to be set in motion now. That's right. Motion comes from light. That's the right. light of the sun strikes the earth and creates revolution. That's right. Teach right now there's revolution going on all over the planet Earth. That's right. But revolution comes from what the book of Habakkuk says that wherever he set his feet, burning coals went forth. That's right. That's Meaning right. that revolution in Russia right now. Go ahead. Yes, revolution sir. in Crimea right now. Yeah, that's right. Revolution in Ukraine and Egypt and that's Jordan right. and Sudan right that's now. Right. Because revolution comes from divine, the presence of divine light. That's right. Go ahead. But it also creates the motion of revolution in our own that's right. yes, we were standing still. That's yes, right. We were like the book of Isaiah says. Yes, For people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. That's right. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Yes, sir. Yes. And that light comes from the east and shines even into the west. Yes, the coming of the Son of Man and the person of Master Farah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He finds, so wherever the eagles are gathered, there shall the carcass be. The eagle is the symbol of America. That's right. One of the highest flying birds in the, in the bird kingdom. But the eagle is also a bird of prey. Yes, sir. It also has sharp claws and sharp talons and sharp eyes to be able to spy on you from <laughs> way up in the Yes, sir. Somewhere. That's right. They say if you have eagle eyes, you don't miss anything. <laughs> yes, sir. The eagle is able to see a little mouse. That's right. In a field under the grass, trying to scurry through the tall grass to hide from the eagle, but the eagle sees it from a long way off. That's right. That's right. And then zooms in on it. Yes, sir. I imagine right now that all of the congressmen and all the senators feel like an eagle eye looking at them right now. That's right. Because the NSA. The National Security Agency oh, is spying on senators. That's right. The United States senators being spied on. Congress people in government being spied on. That's right. Barack Obama, the president of the United States Jeez. of America, being spied on. Yes, so if the president and the senators in the high places of government are being spied on, who is doing the spying? And what are they looking for? Come on. Is Satan that's doing the spot? That's right. Satan, who is the prince of the power of the air. Yes, sir. Is yes, that right or wrong? Yes, right. Satan got attributes too. Yes, he's called the prince of the power of the air. He's the, he's the ruler of this world. That's right. The Quran says that he seeks to steal a listening into the exalted of Satan. But he finds nothing but flames and a strong God. Yes, so he wants to steal a listening. He's listening in on the senators and the Congress people and the president because if they deviate from the, 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 the Zionist imperialistic path that they have all been put on, yes, if they deviate from the path that the neocons and all of these multinational corporations that don't care about the American people. If they deviate from the from protecting the interests of the wealthy conglomerate corporations, this is a shadow government. What you see in front of you is not the real government, but the shadow government that that all of the presidents knew about. We just read a few weeks ago that John F. Kennedy said that I'm going to make it my business to expose the shadows. And a few months later, he was shot in broad daylight in the public in a very exemplary way. His head blown off his shoulders. Is that right or wrong? He was talking about taking back the power to print money from the Federal Reserve and giving it back to Congress again like it should have been. He was talking about scaling back the war in Vietnam. You can't have a president talking about trying to scale back a war. You can't have a president talking about trying to uh, take away the power of the Federal Reserve. Who 
of America is in debt to 17 trillion dollars. So they shot JFK in a convertible limousine, a convertible caravan, with all these windows open all on the parade ground. Secret Service called out of town to go somewhere else. You know they don't suppose to have windows open on the parade route. Who knew about the route beforehand that they could set up a shotgun there? But there's more to that than what meets the eye. But all of these presidents knew about the shadow gun. George Washington knew. Thomas Jefferson knew. Abraham Lincoln knew. But which one of them was strong enough, bold enough, and courageous enough to stand, to warn the people and to guide the people who they were entrusted to be the leaders of? So the Bible in the book of Daniel says, who is like unto the beast and who is able to make war with him? We don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against powers, principalities, the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Put on the whole armor of God. So spiritual wickedness in high places. Raining down terror on the people on the earth. This is what is talked about in the book of Revelation, that there's a great battle in the skies. Well, Michael and his angels are at war with Satan, the dragon, and his angels. And the people on the earth are completely unaware, they're oblivious yes, sir. to the fact that there's a battle raging above their heads. That's right. Come on, because they're too busy being drunken in love. They're too busy trying to clap and drop it down like an eagle and booty clap. That's right. Too busy for snapping their fingers and uh, uh, trying to do the latest dance, the stanky leg. Yes, sir. I know the stanky leg is old, but I don't. I haven't kept up with the dance. Yes, After the stanky leg, I stopped trying to keep up. I used to try to keep up. I used to be at home in the mirror practicing the new dances because I didn't want my children to be so far ahead of me and have such a generation gap. So I would be there trying to learn how to do the butterfly and the tootsie roll. And, yeah. But when they came up with the stinky I said, nah, this is a parting of the ways between me and trying to keep up with the other part. I don't know what the stinky is. We trying to do the stinky leg and the hollow shuffle. They brought the hollow shuffle oh, back. We did the hollow shuffle when I was in college. They brought the Harlem Shuffle back. And they say the Harlem Shuffle is, looks like the crack dance that uh, Samuel Jackson was doing on that movie that he was on. And uh, they brought it back though, they were doing it again. Twerking and whatnot. They have Miley, they got white girls twerking. They got little black girls trying to twerk with their feet on the wall and their hands on the ground, so they're upside down twerking. People trying to keep up with that but unaware that there's a battle, a war that's raging. Come on, brother. We're all confused and misled. We're lost and turned out. That's right. So while we're groping in the darkness, there's a great and decisive battle going on above our heads. And when the man of God is preaching and teaching to us, we stick our fingers in our ears and try to call guidance and warning to them. That's right. And that's why the winds are blowing on. That's why we're suffering loss. That's why we're suffering from diseases and ailments and health issues because we have rejected divine God. That's why our young people are shooting each other down in the streets because they are cold hearted, they are bitter and they are angry because there's no future for them. What kind of future is it for them that they should inherit the same funky raggedy job that we got? Come on, brother. You can't leave a job in your will to your children and grandchildren. Come on, brother. They have tricked you and I. They have bamboozled us and hooked us and led us astray to think that we have melted into the melting pot, but we don't have a damn thing to leave behind to our children. And they're angry about that. That's right, brother. They don't see no future in America. No, sir. 
It's like it's like Brother Dear Brother Collin used to say, you don't own a rock or rail, a spike, a huff, or a puff of smoke. <laughs> you don't own a stick of brick or a blade of grass. <laughs> you don't own anything fighting over a corner that you don't even own. Right. You're fighting over Jefferson, your name ain't Jefferson. Right. You're fighting over, uh, uh, over Shumway, you know, over <laughs> Wakefield, and over the, the names of white people. Right. And you don't own a house, you don't own a building, you don't own a multi-housing unit, you don't own no real estate. Right. You're fighting and killing and spilling each other's precious blood over something that you don't own. That's right. So while we're engaged in all of this fratricide, homicide, and all of this black on black crime, Come on, bro. Come on. where's the people of God at doing all of this? That's right. Right. Where's Go the ahead. people with the guidance that doing all Go of ahead. this? They're also fighting each other. Yes, sir. Church of God in Christ, Church of God under Christ, Church of God under Christ, Church of God without no Christ, Church of Christ without no God. You got Second Day Adventists, you got full gospel, half gospel, three quarter gospel, two percent low fat gospel. You got Muslims like that too. That's right. Ahmadi, right. Shia, Sunni, Sufi, Hanafi, Hanbali. How you gonna blow up a mosque? How you gonna fight the Shias and Sunnis fight each other? Yes, sir. How you a Sunni but you don't like the nation of Islam? Come on, bro. How you a five percent but you don't you wanna kick salt on and put shade on the honorable Elijah Muhammad? Come on, you bro. got your lesson. God is not God is one. Yes. one. God is not divided. No. How can you be a person, the people of God, reading from the same book, following the same messenger, but fighting and arguing against one another right. in the house of God? So while you and I ain't fight, yes. while you and I have splinter groups and schisms and spasms right. and asms, right. right. while we have all these clicks going on, Come on one day they will say you, you knew all of this and you didn't tell me about it what were you doing well I was arguing with my brother because I ain't like the way that he had said that to me though. he could have said it better I ain't like the way that he had looked at me so I, I had a problem with him all this petty I ain't like the way he was holding his head when he said it because it seemed like he was trying to pass with my ball because you know I was I was I was offended by I ain't gonna lie. Yes sir. Why are you offended by this? Right. You are offensive to God. That's right. That's right. Because you're lukewarm with your face. Yes sir. He said hot or cold I take you but lukewarm I skew you out. Come on. We didn't say my life and death is all for a lie as long as they 
talk to me the right way. We didn't say my wife and my dad is all for a lot as long as they give me credit and give me praise and honor and they talk to me. So people, man, get all upset if somebody else gets praise. They think that praise for someone else is taken away from their lives. But the brother, the young woman, Mr. Farrakhan says that envy comes in. Whenever somebody comes along who has a better grasp of what we claim to have a grasp of, the insecurity of that now, we're upset now, we feel displaced because now we thought we had the best grip on it, but somebody else comes that is equal or greater than what we have. But their greatness only bears witness to your greatness. Deceptive kind. 